we're saddling up and thundering off to York now on four to join Bruff Scott and the team Channel 4 Racing. Lyric Fantasy is so fast, no horse has got near her yet. Can she break the record in today's star race here at York? Hello everyone, and a real buzz of expectation around the Naismar today, waiting for Lyric Fantasy's participation in the Keenan Nunthorpe, our top sprint of the season. She's only pony-sized, but she's rocket fast, and claims all the allowances as she bids to become the first two-year-old filly ever to beat her elders in this race. And what elders? Almost all the top sprinters are here, including Mr. Brooks, on whom Lester Piggott scored so memorable a triumph in the July Cup at Newmarket. And Diamonds Galore, the powerful Canadian horse who's flown in after running five furlongs in 55 seconds in New Jersey last month. Keenan Nunthorpe is the third of the five races we bring you live. The going officially good to firm, drying out all the time. Starting less than five minutes with six promising two-year-olds in the Convivial Maiden. There are six fillies in the Lowther Stakes, 11 runners in the Nunthorpe, 22 in the Bradford and Bingley, and 17 in the Ladbrook Naysmeyer Handicap, which closes our meeting. But because of the drying ground, there are quite a few non-runners, seven in all, listed by John Tyrrell. And in the 205, number two, Bixby is a non-runner. In the 235, number two, Greenlit does not take part. And in the 345, number 22, Star Connection doesn't run either. In the 445, number eight, Spring is a non-runner. And in the 515, we have three, number four, Ernestan, number eight, Hazam, and number 10, Flute. Let's hope things run to time today. We were unable to show you the Andy Cap handicap here yesterday, but we did record it for you. Also recorded the last two races. We'll be showing you those today on Channel 4. Mind you, we weren't the only ones who had problems. Dear old Andy and Flo also had problems trying to get here on Ebor Day here at York yesterday. Well, with the ground riding good to firm, we'll be looking for a very special time indeed in the Nunthorpe. Only six horses in the past 20 years have broken the 58-second barrier. Deja blazed the trail with a course record 56.16 two years ago. Can anything beat that today? We'll find out. Also, there's a dial of distance on the 3.45 race. Your chance to win £100. Three steamers for you today. In the 3.45, Blockade, number 17. In the 4.45, Cunning. And the 3.25, Ayama. Something funny is going on. Flash of Straw from 25 to 1 into 4 to 1. Blockade, Cunning, Flash of Straw. There are the steamers. In this race here, four of the five odds on chances in the race have been beaten, but they're betting odds on Map of Stars. Five and a half thousand to five has gone on. Four to five. Five to four on from Eva's Map of Stars. 130 Revelation. 11 to two, Sarangani Bay. Are you prepared to bet odds on in a bad race for odds on chances? It doesn't look as it's going to be a bad race, though. The Moore style convivial maiden, it's six furlongs. The runners include Map of Stars, who hasn't run. Only Revelation has run. Map of Stars, who uh, comes with a considerable reputation. So indeed is Sarangani Bay, another Chapel Hyam team. are very keen on him. It's going to be a very interesting race, and the betting will be significant. Here it is. And Map of Stars is the 5 to 4 on favourite now, opened up at even money. Revelation is 7 to 2 from 3 to 1. And Sanangi Bay is at 5. Society Lady, 7 to 1, open to 6 is. Ben Sable, 20 to 1 from 16 to 1. And your kills the outsider, 25 to 1. <laughs> Well, Sarangani Bay took my eye. I preferred him to Map of Stars. John, what do you think of Map of Stars? Well, Map of Stars is a nice-looking horse, looked very fit, very athletic, but watching him go down to post didn't look the best of movers. I was only able to watch him go down for the first furlong, maybe warmed up a little bit. But only one of these revelations run before. They're all, all sure to improve. The horse that took your eye, Sarangani Bay, just 
needed a little bit of persuasion to go in. He's related to a uh, horse that uh, quite a lot of Channel, few, Channel 4 viewers will know, Mashala, whom John Gosden trains. And obviously just a little bit uh, green. That's it, pat down the neck, steady away. And in he goes. Last to go will be York Hill and Gay Callaway. This is related to a good horse that Paul trained called Starway, who's now a very successful sire in New Zealand. Graham, they're yours. Thank you, James. No uh, previous to go on here, so they break away and a little bit of a ragged start. You can see Society Lady on the right a little bit slowly away, but it's only an experience. Racing fast is uh, Ben Sable, that's the yellow cap, Sarangani Bay, and running the rail, the white sleeves, that's Map of Stars, and then tucked in behind them, York Hill. On the outside is Revelation, that's with experience, and uh, also Society Lady. But it's the big players now, Sarangani Bay on the outside of Map of Stars, who's certainly coming back better than he went down. Map of Stars and Sarangani Bay, Revelation, the experience horse on the outside, and they're kicked three clear of Ben Sable, and they're past the halfway stage now. And Mappa Stars has to go to work on the rail. Sarangani Bay in the middle. On the right, Revelation. Uh, this thatching uh, son yet to make his move. Come down to the two. And all of a sudden, it's getting hard work for Mappa Stars. Odds on in the betting. Doesn't look odds on in the race because Revelation has gone on now uh, by a couple of lengths. And Revelation striding clear. Off the pace, York Hill is staying on nicely. Inside the final furlong now. And Revelation, bit of a revelation. Here comes York Hill on the outside of Mappa Stars up toward the line. And Revelation's going to take it clear by about four to five at the line. Mapper Stars held in second, York Hill is third. Then Society Lady Sarangani Bay uh, was a long way clear of Ben Sable, who was the trailer. And so the result then of this, the more style convivial maiden stakes, it's a win for horse number four, Revelation, in the colours of Mr. J.G. Davis, trained by Richard Hannon at Marlborough. What a day he could have. This one written by Pat Eddery. Second horse home is number three, Mapper Stars. And the third horse home, that's number six, York Hill, who picked up quite nicely between the two and a half and one and a half markers, but ran out of puff a little bit in the final furlong. Revelation returned at 100 to 30. And this horse, well, caught the steward's eye last time when the, at the steward's inquiry, the trainer and rider were fined 400 pounds each when he was running on quite nicely. And... Uh, what could be called kid glove handling. No kid gloves today. It was a punch out to the line. And experience is a big factor here because uh, the moment Steve Cawthon over on the rails on uh, Map of Stars and Paul Eddery on Sarangani Bay both began to ride their horses along at the same time as Pat Eddery did on the winner. Revelation knew what to do. He grabbed hold of the bit for the pressure. Uh, Map of Stars just didn't really quicken up. As John Frankham told you, didn't really stride down very nicely on the way down. He really bangs the ground. And Paul's horse, who pulled extremely hard, um, begins to weaken now and he eases off. And not surprising to see this horse win. He's the one who's had some experience. And the further he's gone, the better he's gone, as they've come just past our commentary box here. And uh, Pat had a job to pull him up. And he'd certainly be a horse worth following. Again, over six, or certainly over a little bit further. Pat Eddery, five day suspension coming up. Crack it on with the winners. Well, uh, the time is there. Revelation returned the Burlington Bertie, 100 to 30, second favourite, an upset map of stars, back down to five to four on from Eva Money. York Hill was third at 25 to one, and of six odds on chances in this race, five have now been beaten. Map of stars, West Arm last year, Kilmara 87, Diggers Rest 85, and Strabo 17 years ago. A bad race to bet the odds on, and a bad race to bet newcomers. Only six out of 30 races of one have gone to newcomers. The stats were against Map of Stars, so it turned out to be a revelation. Well, this is the son of Thatching. And Richard, of course, has done well with sons of Thatching, including Tyrol and uh, good sprinter Shalford. Actually, John, the way this horse finished, he was doing nothing for Pat once he hit the front. He's cocking his ears and running lazily. Yeah, there was still plenty of petrol left in the tank. And I must admit, I feel a little bit sorry for Pat from the five-day suspension for uh, his ride in the Silver Wizard yesterday. Maybe there wasn't quite enough room there, but really seems harsh penalising jockeys for just being keen to win. Well, especially when you take into account that evidently, and I'm not wishing 
Steve Raymond or Richard Hannan any ill will, but evidently they were guilty of malpractice last time, i.e. not trying to win. And the penalty for that's just £400 fine. It's a tough old world, but not if you back this horse. Here's JT with the details. Anchor Gem, first number four, Revelation, 100 to 30. Second number three, Map of Stars, the five to four on favourite. And third number six, York Hill, returned at 25 to one. The totes paid three pounds for the win. The place is 170 and 110. The dual forecast, two pounds and 10 pence. The non-runner was number two and six rounds. Uh, the good performance there by, by uh, Revelation at a uh, time not particularly quick by up on 12.25 compared to 111.42 which is the gym crack time over the six furlongs so evidence of the clock was not anything particularly astonishing in the track and after all, we're looking for the winner of the Nunthorpe to see if he can beat 58 seconds he or indeed <laughs> might well be she may it not 58 seconds or even Deja's remarkable track record of 56 point one six. A lot to happen here on the Maze Mark. Stay with us. This is an appeal from the NSPCC to ask if you can give fifteen pounds now to help save a child's life. Tragically, in this country, three to four children die each week. Helpless victims of violence or neglect. Many more are beaten, abused, even abandoned. Like little Ellie, left alone for days without light, heat or food in the bitter cold. Hungry, lonely, scared. All Ellie wanted was for her mother to come home. Luckily, she was found in time. Last year, the NSPCC helped many thousands of children. Please give what you can before another child is hurt. Your 15 pounds could help fund our child protection helpline where anyone can call if they fear a child is at risk. Your 15 pounds could help us counsel a child suffering from the agony of emotional cruelty. Your 15 pounds could help pay for that first vital visit to a child whose life may be in danger, a defenseless child like Ellie. So please imagine you know an extra child to buy a birthday present for and send them a gift they'll never forget the hope of a life free from terror and pain. Just ring 0800 234 to give £15 or whatever you can spare. That's 0800 234 Our lines are open right now. Thank you. For well over a century, the finest sewing machines have carried the name Singer. But it hasn't always been a name you could carry. Introducing the Singer Handy Stitch. It's genuine Singer quality in the most convenient sewing machine ever. Just thread it in seconds, and away you go. Handy Stitch is perfect for sewing seams. The durable chain stitch assures a clean, secure job every time. M come loose? Just reach for your Handy Stitch, and it's as good as new. Even if you've never used a sewing machine, you can get the job done quickly and easily with Handy Stitch. There's no bobbin to wind, fuss with, or lose. This genuine Singer is so sturdy, it can tackle tough jobs like this. Yet it's so simple and safe, make on-the-spot repairs without even removing the garment. Use it for beautiful decorative touches like this. Straight stitches, curved stitches, anything's a snap with Handy Stitch. It has hundreds of creative and practical uses. The Singer Handy Stitch comes complete with five mini spools of thread. But look. Attach this extension spindle, and you can use standard spools in any color you choose. It's so versatile, you can sew draperies while they're still hanging. Handy Stitch goes anywhere you go. Take it to the office, your college dormitory, or away on vacation. It's always there when you need it. Complete with battery pack, five mini spools of thread, and extra needle and convenient threaders. The Singer Handy Stitch. It's a genuine singer. For the amazing low price of £29.95. Here's how to order. Call 0726 68000. That's 0726 68000. Or make your check payable to Singer Handy Stitch and send it to Handy Stitch, Admail 54, Plymouth, PL12YD. A maze adapter for the Singer Handy Stitch is now also available. Call 0726 68000 for details. If lines are busy, call later. But do call.
and great to have you back with us. And if you pass your exams today, Pat Whelan's lad here just passed his exams. The results out today, really well done. If you fail, get back to work, you idle devil. And let's look ahead to the tissue now. The bookmaker's forecast of how the betting will go. And in the Keeneland Nunthorpe, Lyric Fantasy is put in at 13 to 8 on. That's the price of Lyric Fantasy. And she's the 32nd two-year-old to run in the Nunthorpe since 1922, when the race became a non-seller. Then it's seven to two against Mr. Brooks. Some shrewdies have been going around for each way at four to one, Mr. Brooks. Then nine to one, Freddie Lloyd, and 10 to one, Elbio. Light and lad in the race for the third time, a 25 to one chance. In the 345, the Bradley and Bingley handicap. 11 to two, Little Bean, has been good money for that. But the steamer of the day, the first one is number 17, Blockade, who's been back from 16 to one to half the odds. Mainly each way bets to the Blockade. They expect that at least to get in the four. Really good money for that. Eight to one against Magnified, and ten to one, number six, Jal Music. There's been some money for that as well. In the 415, Scrutineer put in the 11 to two favorite, and they go eight to one by the one. That brings in King Glow, Lips, and Seal Indigo. And the best is way for money. Looks to be number 15, Caspian Beluga. There's a ten to one chance they've done 14 and 12 against it. In the 445, the second of the steamers, though there are non-runners in that race, Cunning. Expected to run a really good race, Cunning. That's going to be probably favourite now. In the early market, they did 7-2 Cunning. And the third steamer of the day, this amazing creature in the 325 at Yarmouth, number 10, Flash of Straw, who's run over six furlongs twice and five furlongs. It was a mile before that, back to a mile now. Is that significant? 25 to 1, 4 to 1 now they're showing against that Flash of Straw. But the steamers yesterday didn't do so well for Tardia and Mudafa. We're giving you three to go ahead with today. Let's try and find a price two can do. Any price two can do? Two can do, Colin. What are you showing two can do? Any prices? I'm calling evens. One wretched bookmaker going up evens. Two can do. It was 11 to 10 on the tissue. That's a very, very early show. You do get the early news on four. We didn't get the late news on four yesterday because, as you know, all sorts of Things went wrong. We had a horse spread plate in the first race. There was an electrical fault with the stalls in the second. There were two stewards inquiry. The whole thing kept steamrolling on. And eventually, the uh, 415 race was run 10 minutes after we'd gone off the air. So we didn't have any preliminaries. But there were 16 runners. It was a very competitive handicap. The Andy Cap handicap, no less, over a mile and a furlong. Let's take it on Mudafa was favourite. But they were already out of it when the action quickened up and they turned into the straight. And it's Ilda Schieffer not uh, stopping here, coming down to the three. Ilda Schieffer clear by two to Cumbrian Challenge and Jubran. And then up on the outside, Padawi follows these. And then behind that one, Military Fashion also with a run is Cezanne. Pulled wide for a run is Top Register. That's getting closer. The Juniper Berry is starting to improve too. They come down past the two. And it's Ilda Schieffer with the top weight. Pressed on the outside by Padawi between the two. Uh, is Cumbrian Challenge and then Lucky gets the rail and it's Badawi now that strikes and goes on they race inside the final furlong and it's Badawi going two to three clear and military fashion Ilda Schieffer and Cumbrian Challenge all placed the best and as they race up towards the line it's Badawi and Steve Cawthon coming clear at the line Badawi eased down the winner a photo for second place no problems there for Steve Cawthon and Badawi winning the Andy Cap here yesterday that was run after we came off the air. Another race that was run after that was uh, the Roses Stakes and one of the best backed horses of the week ran here. That was Realities. Unfortunately for backers of Realities, the horse lost the race before he'd actually started it. The problem happened in the starting stalls. The Colt, as you'll see, got very unruly indeed and for one frightening moment actually looked like ducking under the stalls. Look at this. In stall six, there's the horse, but the starting stall handler's very quick onto the scene, pulled the horse's head up, got hold of the horse's ears, and averted what could have been a very nasty moment indeed. Anyway, eventually the horse was able to take his chance, but that bout of nerves probably cost him the race. Uh, reality is coming through in the pale colors of maroon jacket, and also up with the pace, Saint Express in yellow moving well. They come down to the two, still five, uh, four in line now. Sabre Rattler down the centre of the track, Lord Olivier, uh, Saint Express racing fast in yellow, Reality's under pressure the rail, and they come down to the final furlong, and it's Sabre Rattler the nose band on the right for the hoop sleeves, going on by a length, length and a half now, the Saint Express second keeping up the gallop, uh, Nominator finishing fast, but at the line, it's Sabre Rattler who wins, Saint Express second, Nominator third. 
Dave Arapolo winning that one nicely. John Carroll would have ridden that, but he had a fall on the gallops yesterday and he's been ordered to have a few days rest. So Pad Edery stepped in for the ride there and uh, that made up a little bit for the five-day suspension he received earlier on on Silver Wizard. Mind you, that uh, five-day suspension could cost him the championship. But you know, Pat Edry, he could ride five winners in a day. And he closed the gap between himself and Michael Roberts to 21 in the last race here yesterday, the Falmouth Stakes. He rode western approach here. Pat led most of the way, and he had the situation under control from a long way out. Western approach down the centre of the track from Saddleholm. Then Bunty Boo on the extreme left, also with a run, is Super Rocky. Don't rule out Badari coming there on the extreme right with a nose band, a furlong and a half to go. And it's Western approach in the pink cap. Pedigree going on now by a length and a half to Saddleholm and Bunty Boo, the yellow on the left. They're inside the final furlong now. And it's Western approach sprinting two, three, four clear as they race up towards the line. And Western approach takes it. Western approach the winner. Bunty Boo in second and a photo third. So Pedigree, another winner. And I must say, I do think that we actually, the rules are the rules, but the way things are constructed, facts are Pat Edry has got a seven-day suspension after Jim Crack yesterday for trying too hard, and the connections of the last race got uh, only 400 quid for not trying hard enough And uh, it, when they last ran at Kempton. And uh, I think that it's much more important for the public that uh, people should be, the inferences of trying too little should be looked into. Uh, Jockey's trying too hard isn't that bad a thing, and to try and penalise them for having a bit of a cut is necessarily that bad a thing. Maybe we should rethink our priorities. Enough of moralising, let's have a look at the latest standings in the Ritz Club Trophy for the leading rider at this meeting, these three days here. The marvellous Crystal, Waterford Crystal Trophy, and there'll be two cheques of £5,000 going to the Indian Jockeys Fund and the Order of St John, nominated by the Ritz Club. Well, the standings at this stage are Pat Edery, leads with three wins, Steve Corson, Michael Hills and Alan Monroe have two each, Darren Biggs, Dettori, Duffield, Kennedy, McEwen and Mr. Pickett all have one. So in the immortal words of the soccer commentators going into the second half, there's everything to play for over the rest of the day. And everything to play for in the Dow Distance competition coming up in our fourth race, the penultimate race here of our meeting. Fourth race, 0891-100-195. You've got to guess the distance between the first and the second, that's in the Bradford and Bingley handicap. You dial 0891 100 195. The official distance between the first and the second, three 100 pounds to be won, and winners to be announced before the end of the program. Now on to the Lyder Stakes, uh, important two old Phillies event. We've got seven runners, and interesting enough, as the uh, the winnings are 38,000, but there's also uh, 250 to the staff, the stud breeding the winner. It's uh, one set of people who are often not uh, looked after are stud staff, but a lot of other teams are, are looked after. It's a very nice innovation, that, I think. And uh, the ladder stakes, six runners over six furlongs, and Graham Good. Stalls placed on the stand side. Number one is Niche at four, Lester Bigot, Greenland doesn't take part. Number three, Julia Bravo. At seven, that'll be the rail runner, Lindsay Charnock on board. Number four is Northern Bird at three, Willie Carson. Hot last night at Kempton. Then number five, Risk Me's Girl at one. That'll be on the extreme right, Walter Swinburne rides. Number six, uh, Shami set at five, Steve Cawthon. And number seven, Two Can Do at two. Written by Ray Cochran. Two Can Do is the 11 to 10 favorite. Niche on nine to four. Northern Bird 11 to 2 and Shamisen on 8 to 1. Brisney's Girl is a 12 to 1 shot. Juliet Bravo the 100 to 1 outsider. And now Two Can Do is the 6 to 4 favourite. Two Can Do 6 to 4. So 6 to 4 Two Can Do from 11 to 10. That's a bit of a surprise because although she might not be the best looking filly in the field. She's a little bit on the small side. There's no doubt that looking at the form book she's got the best chance at these weights. She appears still to be improving. Her runner-up position last time in the Cherry Hinton Stakes when she was second to Saya Darty was her best effort. And John, she didn't get the best of runs that day either. No, she didn't get the best of runs, but she's incredibly genuine and her form has been consistent. In fact, the thing about it, a lot of these two-year-olds, they do hold their form. Niche has always been up there. Just have a look at her at the back in those dark blue colours with the uh, pink V. 
and just being pulled out to make a run now, Ray Cock, and she's quick enough because this wasn't a blistering pace early, early on, and she did well to pull back and get her close to Sayadati as she did. Nish kept on well, but uh, didn't uh, get too hard a race once her chance had gone, but she's doing all of her best work, I thought, in the closing stages. And five to four on the fall, or six to four, looks quite a good value bet. Well, let's have a look at Nish, because she's quite a tall looking filly, this, and time might prove that although her best form is over five furlongs, I think that that one run over six probably uh, wasn't her true show, and I think she's a filly who's going to be much happier being let to bowl along. Um, Do you think she really got the trip that day, John? Well, watching it there, I didn't think that she did, but I'm not sure that that is the case because I've watched her since, and I think that she's a filly who will get this trip this afternoon. I just think she's a, um, an individual who likes to bowl along and enjoy herself, which is how she was winning her races early on. It's just quite a rangy filly. She's not really um, so She doesn't carry a lot of flesh, does no, she? No, she doesn't. And we're talking about the horse, I should remind you. No, number four is a different type of individual altogether, Northern Bird. She's a, sh a short backed filly, by that I mean her, her forelegs and hind legs are, are in relation to most of the others, quite close together. She's quite a compact filly, therefore. She wears uh, bandages behind. She probably just speedy cuts a little bit, John. She's always worn them. And she came back after a lengthy absence last time to win a nursery in good style at Bath. Long way removed from the level of uh, opposition that two can do and Nisha had been running against, but nonetheless, she carried top weight in that nursery and couldn't have done it in more emphatic style. Now, I was quite impressed with her because that was her first run for some time. She, like many of Barry Hills' horses, just not been quite right. And she was just struggling to go with the pace early on. And as you can see, she's quite a powerfully built filly. She took her time to get into gear. And when she did, she went and won nicely. She had a lot of weight in that nursery. And prior to that, when we'd seen her before at Sandown, she put up a good run to uh, beat no reservations. Well, one person who's smiling, he's smiling because I think he's delighted to be out here in the sunshine. And she's also very pleased to be alive. Had a lucky escape yesterday, coming up with a few other jockeys. Had a narrow escape, uh, and he just me missed being crashed into by a fighter plane. No damage done. Back again, there's another chestnut filly, Shamazen. She ran really well first time that she ran. That was over seven furlongs at Yarmouth, self-assured, who finished behind her that day, ran really well here the day before yesterday. And then she was just a little bit disappointing, Jim, on her second run at Newmarket. Yes, admittedly it was quite a hot race. It was the race at Arking last one, and it's significant that she's brought back a furlong in distance, but you wouldn't have thought that seven furlongs of Arking Glass's race would would have been against her, and she really should have done better than 10 lengths, fifth of seven. She's certainly a nice individual, and although Clive is uh, reasonably optimistic, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have bothered running her here unless he thought she could uh, put up some sort of a show. And one, one point, just to stress, John, that Steve Cawthon rides this is not Michael Roberts, because Greenlet doesn't run, and Steve is retained by Sheikh Mohammed and some of uh, the Maktoum family, and Syed Manana, who owns Shamazen, comes into Steve's contract, so that's why Michael steps down. That's Risk Me's girl we're looking at now. She's had her last few runs on ground that I think is probably much too soft for her. At Newbury the other day, she did run well to run behind Palace Gate episode. And uh, prior to that, ran behind stable companion Lyric Fantasy in the uh, Newbury Sprint Trophy. On both of those occasions, the ground certainly on the soft side of good. Prior to that, she'd won Quite a moderate sort of contest at Windsor. One thing I can tell you, if you were down in the betting ring here at York and standing next to me and I was holding your hand, you could not back this two can do. For over the even money in 11 to 10, they pushed it right out to 13 to 8 and there's hardly been a nibble for it. We're waiting to see if Ladbrook's the magic sign or Hill's come in for it. At the moment, they're not. Why is all the opposition building up to this two can do? Now, Nice has been backed against her, 9 to 4 early, into 7 to 4 and challenging for favouritism. 
now that Nice also money for Northern Bird, 11 to 2 in the 5 to 1. It's an 8 to 1 Shamison, 14 with Smith Girl, and 100 the Rag, Juliet Bravo. Five favourites have won the Lowther in 16 runnings over six furlongs. Only one in the last seven years. Why are they knocking out the form horse who can do? 13 to 8 from even money. And that's uh, two can do in the pink sleeve jacket on the right there going down. Best of going past on niche, but uh, two can do, I must say, not the most impressive of movers in her slower paces, Jim. Nice start. Well done. Uh, Lindsay Charlotte's done really well on that while Matt was going through the betting. John Frankham, slightly amused, has been watching Lindsay hang on for dear life and he's never really looked like coming off John well he? I was slightly amused but I was very impressed because <laughs> this horse was spinning round like a top with its head stuck between its legs and uh, as soon as he finished going round one way promptly stopped ran backwards and then ran round the other way and Lindsay done particularly well not to come off very powerful filly this um, strong and long not a bad northern filly she uh, won or won a maiden race at Ayr early on in the season, making virtually all over five furlongs. It's been a bit inconsistent since. Wears a tongue strap, possibly to help keep uh, the bit up in her mouth and make sure she doesn't get her tongue over it, because judging by the way she's been carrying on, she does look a mite headstrong. She looks to, looks to have a bit on, on her plate, though, to take a hand in the finish here on a line through some horses she's been running about. Sabre Rattler, for instance, she was getting plenty of weight from that one. Anyway... Let's have a look, see if anybody's been back in them. And Julia Bravo, still the 100 to 1 outsider. Two can do now up to 13 to 8, open out 11 to 10. Niche is 15 to 8 from an opening price of 9 to 4. And Northern Bird is 5 to 1 from 11 to 2. Shamisen is steady on 8 to 1. And now Rismi's Girl is out to 16, so open to 12. Juliet Bravo is still the extreme outsider at 100 to 1, and they're all quoted for the Lowther Stakes. Well, there's opposition to the favourite here. Two can do, so let's get the answer straight from the horse's mouth. With me is the trainer, Conrad Allen. Conrad, can you explain this opposition in the betting ring to your friend? It's probably because I haven't had a bet, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> they, they usually... Uh won't take my money when I want to have one, so mm. uh, it's probably because I haven't been in there yet because you've grabbed me. Exactly. Well, <laughs> how is she? Are you going to have a bet today or not? Uh, probably not, because uh, the ground's a little bit uh, firmer than I wanted it. I, was, yeah. I really did want the rain. Mm. Um, and also, after the Cherry Hinton, she had to have a flu vaccination mm. and just got a temperature of 104, so I gave her an easy week. Mm. And I'm perhaps just a gallop short than I wanted to be. So her main target has always been the breeder stakes in Ireland and uh, she's fit enough, I think, to do herself justice. But uh, for me today, at this price, not a betting proposition. Conrad, thank you very much indeed for telling us that. Thank you. And 100% honest there, Conrad Allen, explaining the reasons and the bookmakers do get to know these things. I have to tell you, one of the shrewdest nuts in the ring has been round with £800 at 2 to 1 for uh, 13 to 8 for 2 can do. So there is still some confidence behind it, but Conrad Allen really putting you off there. The bookmakers want to get it. That's why it's 13 to 8 with 15 to 8 niche and Northern Bird. They're being back to upset this very weak favourite. And now you know why it is. Great interview, Tomo. Conrad Allen, thanks for marking our card. Well, if there's opposition to the favourite, what about the horse who could be favourite in the next minute or so? That is Nice in the middle in the scarlet colours, and with me is a man who knows her inside out. Taffy Williams, travelling head lad to Richard Hannon. What's the latest on Nice, Taff? Nice, she is very, very well. Yeah. And whatever Conrad Allen says, you know, sometimes he tells the truth. <laughs> but a lot of them live in a fantasy world. But what about it? I mean, you're having a Lester very good thing. she'll win. Simple as that? Simple as that. He said he won't get beat today. Oh, really? Yep. And Lester's a pretty good judge. And he said that about Mr. Brooks at Newmarket at Windsor on a Monday night, and he was quite right as it turned out. Just a matter of interest, you've got another runner in this, Risk Me's Girl, number five, what the Swinburne on board? She'd have a she'd have a decent chance, but I wouldn't think she'd be anywhere near as good as Nish. You know, I'd love to see a dead heat, which is not possible, really. Yeah. But, you know, I hope it's one or the other. But normally, when we run two, always the other one that comes and wins. Exactly. 
And you're having a great time. You've been with Richard Hannum, what, 17, 17 years, years since he started? Since he started. And you tell me yesterday that every year he's increased his We've time. increased the total. We've never gone back. We've always gone forward. Yeah. And you've got two good horses coming across from the stables shortly? Well, we've got one on the way now. It's just come in here now, which is Lyric Fantasy. She's coming over in the horse box. Why is she coming in the horse box? Well, he gets so much teed up coming across there, you know. A yeah. lot of the horses, they're sweating before they get here. Yeah. You know, it won't matter to, to her. You know, she's very, very settled. Well, well that, that'll be a procession, that will. Well, no, that's not that one, because uh, that's another horse coming over from the Nunthorpe, and we've got the horse box actually coming across the middle of the track, and it's only a matter of about, what, 500 yards, but that's you've all. put her in the horse box just yep. to settle her down, not to get her G'd up. No, nope. and she's just going to land with that blue lorry is over there. Super. We'll see that shortly, but now let's concentrate on the louder. They're backing everything in the race against the favourite. 13 to 2 from 8 Shamison, 9 to 2 Northern Bird, 7 to 4 joint favourites now. Nice and 2 can do. They're giving 2 can do away. Oh, well, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Risk me's girl in there. Lined up for the loud up, and they break away. And uh, a little bit slow to go running the rail, Julia Bravo, and they're all electing to come. Uh, Three or four widths off the fence is Lester quickly away on Niche, the horse with a white face. Shamisen in the striped cap of red and white, six to one at the off. Steve Corfin now deputizes. Rismi's girl followed through by Northern Bird, the blue and green. And uh, just behind the huddle, two can do. That'll be on the right. Julia Bravo is getting a little bit closer. The pace probably not that strong, but they're playing Lester's game out in front by our neck to a half on Niche. To the right, Rismi's girl. To the left is uh, Shamisen. And then behind that one, Northern Bird. Two can do now in the pink colours on the right of the picture as they come down to two, come down to the two, getting closer. Nice just uh, has it there. Risk me's girl. Two can do on the extreme right. Shamisen comes under the cosh, won't be getting anywhere now. Furlong and a half to go. And Nish and Lester Bigger just oozing confidence. Two can do it after her, but Nish has the answers here from Two Can Do. And it's Lester making all on Nish, striding clear. Shamisen rallies for a place up towards the line. Nish takes it very tightly indeed. Nish is the winner. Shamisen second. Two Can Do third. Then came Northern Bird, Rismi's girl, and a big, big break to Julia Bravo. And so the result then of this group two loud the stakes it's a win for number one niche in the colors of lord carnarvon trained at marlborough by richard hannon so a double for him already today and arguably the best is yet to come lester tickets 25th winner of the season was number one niche second horse home is number six chamisen up there for a lot of the way lost a place and then rallied and the third horse home was the bargain basement by number seven two can do niche at two to one lester's 25th of the season few easier. Graham used the phrase uh, pretty early on in that commentary, John, he said they're playing Leicester's game and uh, the others wanted to be held up, Leicester wanted to make the running and the, he's such a good judge of pace, you saw that up from behind and Rodrigo the other day, here you see it from in front, he just eat this filly out, he made sure they didn't go too fast early on, despite the fact being pressed by Risk Me's girl, there she is singled out for you. And at the second half of the race, when shaken up, she really did find a nice turn of foot. And you wouldn't really know that she's had a race. Watching her trot back, she was almost showing off, really pointing her toe. And at this point, about a furlong, furlong and a half to go, and we've just heard that uh, Toucan Do is being led in. She looked pretty um, pottery on her way to the start. But there's nothing pottery about me. She's lengthened her stride. We thought beforehand that she'd get this trip she certainly got every yard of it the further she's gone the easier she was going and really has enjoyed herself this filly would have done her confidence the world of good she suffered a couple of setbacks in her last couple of races but she's back on the winning trail again and i dare say it won't be too many minutes before owner lord carnarvon's in the winner's enclosure again also Oh, well, she looks pretty sore, though. Yeah, she looks very pottery on the way to the start. I should think that she's just a little bit shoulder and ground is just drying up all the time here this afternoon. Well, if Lester, uh, Pat Edery's having a tremendous run here. He's had four, I think, but if Lester's now had two, got Mr. Brooks to come, it would be the biggest shock in the world if old Stoneface pulled off the Ritz Club trophy.
Well, this is Toucan Do walking back, and I just had a quick chat with Ray Cochran. I said, what happened? He said, she's a lame. And she is walking back just a little bit sore there. The ground, obviously, with no uh, rain, appreciable rain here in the past week, just dried out. And just what Conrad Allen was saying, he's just worried about the firm ground. So that's the reason Ray Cochran jumped off shortly after passing the post. Well, famous colours those, red, blue collar, white cap, and this filly, bred by Lord Carnarvon too, although she has a sale price which indicates she went through the ring at Tattersalls, I think at some stage, £7,600, but if high clear stud, that's Lord Carnarvon's operation. Son of Risk Me, Risk Me was a champion older colt in France in 1986, although he's actually trained by um, Paul Kellaway, he won the uh, Grand Prix de Paris, he's a very good horse. And this horse will be as good an animal as he's so far sired. Cubbyhole, the dam, comes from a very interesting family. She's out of hiding place, and Cubbyhole is related to Little Wolf and Smuggler, but also uh, to the dam of uh, Sheikh Albany. So the speed and stamina there. Oh, lovely. Shots there, for, shots there for the archives. This filly with a look of her sire, he was a chestnut with uh, a bit of white about him. And, uh, it's amazing what a difference it makes, Jim. Some horses, when they just like to make the running, when they get, when they get their own way. Well, she's not gonna, looking as though she's not going to take a nice picture with the Australian noseband bit skewy across her face. Let's have a look at her stable companion, Lyric Fantasy who's come over in the horse box so that she didn't get too upset. The horse is having the first run up here. So many people can be a little bit off-putting for some of these fillies. Stable, stable attendants almost wearing similar outfits, John. Yeah, it's really smart. We see it quite often when we're jumping through the winter where whoever's looking after the horse will have a sweatshirt or something done in the same colours as the owner. And there's a nice little bit of topiary two different types of privet there. Well, Mac, give him lots of credit. He's very strong on his info and he's rarely wrong when he's got really strong information. If you listen to him, you must have been on the winner. Here are the details. It wasn't really that, Jimbo, as you, as you can see the price there. The two to one, second favourite niche. He did in fact touch five to two on the course and notice the tote return there. Pays only £2.70 on the tote which is around 13 to 8, 7 to 4. 2 to 1 against Nice. The second Shamison went off at 13 to 2. And 2 can do the very disappointing 7 to 4 favour. But Conrad Allen warned you about the ground. As Summer found out afterwards from Ray Cochran, the ground was probably the cause of the trouble for our 2 can do pulling up lane there for the market. You come racing, you listen to the vibe, you hear the whispers. You wonder why bookmakers push out horses. They're not philanthropists. They don't give money away. Why were they going 7 to 4, a chance that was put in at even money in 11 to 10? That's the question you have to ask yourselves. And good old Conrad Allen, we really owe him a debt on Channel 4. He marked our card. And at Yarmouth, the 220 was won by number 2, Ari Stamp, at 33 to 1. But you could have had 52 to 1 on the turf, as you can see. Second number 1, Indian Jack, 2 to 1. And third number 7, Nieb, 33 to 1. Number five, Flamingo Rose, was the seven to four favorite, and age Ryan. And Adair, the 2.30, went to number one, another episode, the three to one on favorite. Second number three, Francis Anne at six to one. And third number two, North of Watford, nine to two, three run. I think Conrad Allen's rather regretting uh, taking, taking a part with Two Can Do. Uh, just saying down there now, she's late, as you saw, and it may well be her last run of the year. They're winning time, they're 1160, which is um, half a second quicker than Revelation in the first race, but still not actually as quick as the Democrat yet. It's not a particularly startling time, but I think we can expect fireworks in the next, so the ground is rising fast. We could well get an under 58 second by Furlong. Join us and join us quick. Wilkinson Sword Protector. A razor so sharp that it has to be kept behind bars. Nice, he's a strong man.
protective guard wires mean that while the shave is close, as you would expect from Wilkinson saw, it will be the safest wet shave you've ever had. The safest wet shave ever. Protector. New, only from Wilkinson Sword. Your £15 gift could help the NSPCC save a child's life. Please call 0800 treble 4 230. That's 0800 treble 4 230. We're waiting for your call now. Thank you. In order to save money on his motor insurance, this man relies on his broker. But his broker won't be calling every company for a quote. Because direct line don't pay commission to brokers, we can pass the savings on to you. So why not let direct line cut out the middleman? And you might just find our quote is the cheapest of the lot. Thank you. For cheaper motor insurance with a human voice, Call Direct Line on 081 686 2468. Red wine, tea, strawberry. When it's raining stains, look for a washing powder that's not just concentrated, but super concentrated. New Surf Micro Plus. It's the best surf yet, squaring up to really stubborn stains. When surf's as good as this, why pay more? Never know how much I love you. I remember her delicate fragrance Never know how much I love you. on the air. She said when the ocean was gone. Around, around. She died. Like some kind of free spirit. When you kiss me, you know, she'd swear there was a garden at the bottom of the ocean. And that night, in the morning, I found it. Free spirit from impulse. Four months supply of toothpaste. Four months soup. Four months new roll. And up to four months' supply of Maxi Flush Bleach Toilet Cleaner, cleaning with a concentrated germ killing surge every flush. Maxi Flush Bleach and Blue for a clean four months. If you were to prepare your own tandoori fried rice, you'd need some rather special ingredients like cayenne pepper, ground turmeric, and cardamom. And something to carry them home in. Fortunately, bachelors have managed to combine the whole exotic caboodle, and you'll probably find the packs a little easier to maneuver in the high street. Bachelors Special Fried Rice. here and it's going to be scorching hot when they hit the blocks for the Keenan Nunthorpe in about 20 minutes time. The first news we've got is that Michael Roberts, whose lowest riding weight has been 7.7.10 in the last 12 months, has darted his way down, starved his way down to 7.7.8. He hasn't actually made 7.7.7. He has made 7.8. That's with saddle and everything, boots, boots and colours and everything else to ride Lyric Fantasy, the favourite, the flying little two-year-old pony she is really in this phenomenon. And how fast will she go? Don't forget the beating 60 seconds is always fast over five furlongs, but here the winning time was by Deja, 56.16, and there have been eight horses, only eight down the years, who've actually beaten 58 seconds. Let's look at the horses who've beaten 58 seconds down the years in this the Nunthorpe Stakes. Had other names, but let's look at the list. Deja did 56.16, committed, you remember? The filly from uh, Dermot Wells said went brilliantly fast, 57.24. Last Tycoon, 57.47. Caddo Genero did 57.67. Deep Diver back in 72 did 57.70. And Habiti from John Dunlop's stable, she also beat 58, did 57.99. Let's see, all those six, beginning with the brilliant Habiti. 
Sober has the advantage. Sober by a couple of lengths from her beastie now, the challenger. They're coming inside the final furlong. The crowd are beginning to roar. It's Sober in the lead from her beastie. Sober from her beastie leads drawing away from five edge. Sober being joined now by her beastie. Her beastie on the sand side. And her beastie going past Sober. David is protected his left hand. But it's her beastie going on, proving the stronger. These six pair of the others. It's her beastie from Sober. Her beastie going to win it quite easily. Her beastie is the winner. And his deep dive is still holding Sylvia on the far side. Then comes Constant. And the leading two going away from Constant. His deep dive is still holding the lead. They come into the last furlong. And his deep dive are running on in tremendous style. They got about 75 yards to go. And deep dive is going to trot this one as they come up towards the line. Deep dive is the winner. Sylvia is second. Oh, it's Degani on the right pressing now. And the early leader, eloquent winners, uh, who's starting to tie up. Cato Genero coming with a run. Sato Bless with a yellow cap uh, finishing fast. Silver Fling might yet get a place. Cato Genero, the favourite, strikes the front. They're inside the final third on Cato Genero from Tigani, Sato Bless and Silver Fling, who's flying at the desk, but the favourite will win it. Cato Genero has it. Cato Genero, the winner. A three-way photo for second. They've got two furlongs to go, and Double Schwartz now strikes the front. Double Schwartz from Green Desert, Orion on the left of the group. Last Tycoon on the right throws down a big challenge. Green Desert just has it, but here comes Last Tycoon on the right of the three. Inside the final furlong, Last Tycoon, Green Desert and Double Schwartz battling it out up towards the line. Double Schwartz, what a fighter, but Last Tycoon going on by a neck by half a length. Last Tycoon gets the event, Last Tycoon the winner. It's over a furlong to go. John O'Quist really going for home. Here comes committed on the outside of Anita's Prince. John O'Quist committed and Anita's Prince. Habibti is well beaten and it's committed who goes on inside the final furlong. It's committed from John O'Quist with Habibti going to get third. It's committed who's going to win this quite easily. Committed by three, four legs up the line. From John O'Quist second, Habibti only third. Furlong and a half to go and Willie Carson isn't hanging about. He's still in the lead on Danger. Clear by two. Stato Best on the right uh, puts in a big finish. Pharaoh and Delight is third. Mr. Nicholson fourth. That's best. Carol Treasure picks up. But it's Danger from Trust to Live. And Danger is clear by three to four from Stato Best. And as they race up towards the line, Danger has it. Danger the winner. Well, Deja holds the course record, 56.16, but with me is a guy who's come all the way from Canada whose horse running in this race has clocked, what's his fastest time for Diamonds Galore, Jim? 55 and 4 fifths. Oof, which is very fast, isn't very, it? Yes, it is. Now, that was on a round course. How will he appreciate the straight five here? I think he'll like a straight five. Um, he has trouble around the turn, actually, so mm -hmm. on a straight course, I expect him to run maybe a a little bit quicker. A little, have you been training him any differently? Because most of your races are on dirt over there as well. Here you're on the turf. Um, I'm always on the turf with him. He, yeah. is a, he is a grass sprinter. He doesn't prefer the dirt at all. And uh, we haven't trained him any different into this race as we have our past. And so his 55 and 4 fifths is from starting stalls to the finish. Yes, it So is. he's obviously very fast out the stalls. Yes, he is. Yes, now, very, we, pretty sharp today, I think. Now, we've had a few horses that have come over here in the past, American horses. Mr. Nickerson came over here with a big reputation. Yes. Didn't do the business. How confident are you that this fellow will prove different? Well, I like his chance on the grass better. Mr. Nickerson wasn't really a grass horse. He had run in the dirt up until he came here, and I don't think he liked the turf as much as he does the dirt. My horse does love the grass, and he likes a firm course, which we are getting today, so I have that in his favor as well. If he runs up to scratch, how do you think he'll go? I think he should be right there. Um, I, I, we're against the field, brilliant runners, and this is the toughest field he's been against, and I think he'll be right there. Um, by the way, what sort of reception have you had since you've been here? The British people have been looking after you? They've been taking care, great care of us. I mean, it's been wonderful the whole trip. Yeah. From, uh, from uh, Osburton Hall, they took care of us there. I mean, they've taken really good care of us. Well, I, I hope the Maple Leaf, if it's not flying high, <laughs> is at least flying tonight. <laughs> I hope it is, too. Thanks for joining us. Good luck, Thank idea. you very much. Thank Bye -bye. you. And that, and, that diamonds, and that diamonds galore is a 50 to 1 chance. Diamonds galore over in America. Of course, they wouldn't believe it. A tier old filly back to beat diamonds galore, and they're offering 50 to 1. Let's have a look at the record of fillies. Now, 30, uh, two year olds, 31 two year olds have run in the non fort, but first became a non seller in 1922. Four before the war, the best of them was obliterate, beating a short head in 1923. And since the war, three two year olds have won it, all the first ones to run. High trees and my barbo and Ennis. But since then, the two-year-olds have all gone under. And look at the record of them recently. Paris House last year. And a tremendous race, of course, against Sheikh Albert, who beaten a length and a half. There, Petalanti in 89. All eight two-year-old fillies to run in the non have all been beaten. The last of them was Petalanti. The best day, if we look at those horses, with many of them long prices, was Daring Boy in 73. who was unbeaten in his four previous starts. The National Stakes at Sandown. The Windsor Castle at Royal Ascot. Only seventh to Sanford Lad. Portobello was favourite and Ireland's Fatima's gift 
were second best in 67 and they were caught close home in the race won by Forlorn River. And other two are finished to run well, like Alamo City, that was third Alamo City, Katarina, beaten half a length in 65 by Polyphoto. Kerry B in 1960 was beaten by Bleep Bleep and Abba Dessa in 58, beaten half a length by the 108 on chance, right boy ridden by Lester Piggott. And the weights in those days when the Ennises and the High Treaters and my Barbo were winning more favour the two-year-olds than they do now. So there's four or five pounds difference, a harder still for Lyric Fantasy, but she's been back 11 to 8 on they've taken. She's 6 to 4 on Lyric Fantasy, 4 to 1 against Mr. Brooks, 8 to 1 Freddie Lloyd, and 10 to 1 against El Bio. This flying filly, is she another Mumtis Mahal, a legendary filly who ran in 1923? That's what the hacks say. We'll find out now, but they're betting 6 to 4 on her, being as good as Mumtis Mahal. It's still early days, but she certainly has looked to the naked eye incredibly quick. And never forget, she beats 60 seconds up the uh, Ascot fire, fire, which is very hard thing to do. And the first filly to do, two year old filly to do that. And uh, she does look exceptionally fast to the eye. And of course, that's the, the fun of it. You really might be in the presence of, of at least equine greatness. We'll see, and we'll see soon enough. The man who knows more about them than anything is Richard Hannon, who of course also trains Lester's ride, Mr. Brooks here earlier this afternoon, there was a special presentation to him. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there is now a special presentation about to take place here in the winner's enclosure and to celebrate the tercentenary of Taylor's Port, the oldest and largest port house in existence. The company has sponsored an award to the trainer who saddles 100 winners on the flat this season. And only one trainer has done that so far. It is, of course, Richard Hannon. And Richard's reward is four bottles of Taylor's Port the combined age of which is 100 years. And making the presentation to Richard is Mr. Paul Champness, the UK sales manager for Taylor's Port. Richard, many congratulations on that. That's rather a nice prize to win, isn't it? Very nice. Oh, I'm going to go over <laughs> He was worried there for a second. <laughs> A hundred years of court and a hundred winners. Things are going fantastically well. Why are they going so well this season? Is there a secret? Is there? Know, Why is it? Well, they've kept healthy all the year, you know. I mean, mm. we had a little bit of coughing earlier on, but luckily it cleared and didn't go inside them, you know. It's, they've, uh, they've been running their hearts out. And you've yeah. also had, you, you run them as well. They don't just, you, they run their hearts out for you. You seem to run them a lot. You don't rest on your own. Well, dogs. we don't do a hell of a lot with them at home. I mean, you don't earn any money at home. I mean, you, you earn it when you come here. Yeah. So we just keep them ticking over and running them, you know, that's all. Well, you're here today. You've got two very strongly fancied runners coming up in an unthought. What side is, first of all, on Lyric Fantasy? She's in, uh, she's in great form. Um, she's drawn very well, too, and, uh, and the ground's come to a favour, I think, you know. Uh, just depends with the old horses with the two-year-olds, you know, if she gets a good weight allowance, but she's not very big, you know. Has she worked with older horses at home? Yeah, well, she's, she's done a fair share of work. I mean, she, she works with, I tend to work with, um, you know, three-year-olds that, you know, are not particularly good, so that she, you know, is in, enjoys herself more than more than works very hard, you know. She's very fit for the all, always. We're looking forward to seeing her run, but what about the other one who's done nothing wrong either, Mr. Brooks and Lester? Um, I don't know, the five furlongs today and the ground might have been just gone a bit too fast for him, you know. I mean, I hope he comes through the race all right, but uh, he's a horse that finishes. I, I think probably six is his best trip, though, you know. So of your two today, you would be hoping more for Lyric Fantasy? I think she'd be, um, yeah, she'd definitely be the one. I hope think. you go well today, and congratulations on having such a great season. Thank you very much. Well done. And don't forget, as a two-year-old filly, she receives all the allowances, only carries seven stone eight, everything else has nine stone and above 11 runners for this the keenan sponsored nunthorpe stakes five furlongs more than ninety thousand pounds for the winner a blazing fast the highest fastest sprint we'll have had in europe so far this year here's the full card from graham and they have between them won over 1.37 million in win and place prize money number one blight and lad written by stuart webster from stall nine Number two, Diamonds Galore at five, Aaron Grider already uh, walking down to the start. Number three, LBO at one, Walter Swinburne, that'll be on the extreme right. Number four, Elia Saf at 11, John Williams on the extreme left. Number five, Farfalu Blinkett at three, Richard Quinn. Number six, Medai Dor Visor at two, Frankie Dettori. 
Pick number seven, Mr. Brooks at eight. Leicester Pickett, number eight, Freddie Lloyd at seven, ridden by Pat Eddery. Number nine, the very pacey Paris House, led for a long way in this race last year. Don't forget at four, Steve Corfin. Number ten, Harvest Girl at six, Willie Carson. And then, Lyric Fantasy, number 11, drawn 10, Michael Roberts, just one off the rail and one pound overweight. Let's check the odds. Lyric Fantasy is the 5-4 to four on favourite. Mr. Brooks is 7-2 to two from 4-1. Four to one. Freddie Lloyd at 7-1 to one and LBO on 10s. Harris House is 12-1 to one from 14-1 to one with Light and Ladder 25s. Diamonds Galore, 33 to 1. Farfalu on 50s, together with Medai Dor. El Yasuf, 66 to 1. And Harvest Girl, also a 66 to 1 chance. And they're all quoted for the Nunthorpe. Well, a fascinating sprint here with uh, an international flavour being added by the presence of the Canadian sprinter, Diamond, Diamonds Galore, who makes his way down early to the start, just uh, basically at a hack for his uh, jockey, Aaron Grider has been walked up until this point and now the lad just let go of the lead and uh, going to make his own way down. Presumably they do things pr uh, totally differently in America where there are outriders, John, and Canada too. And it would be a new experience, I suppose, going down with other horses. Certainly, it's going down really nice. He looks a lot happier now he's on the move. He got himself really warm in the paddock beforehand. And it's interesting to note that as sprinters go, he's nowhere near as bulky and as muscular as the last couple of horses have been sent over here. Mr. Nickerson, in particular, was a really heavy horse, whereas this one certainly isn't. He's actually not bred to be a sprinter. The sire, he was trained by Ian Balding and was a middle distance horse. So that's uh, one piece of interest. Here's another fascinating aspect of the race. And this is the presence of Lyric Fantasy. Well, you've heard the views of Richard Hannon. And you can see there, one pound overweight at uh, 7.8 for Michael Roberts. She looks in tremendous shape, this filly, re really perky and uh, pleased with life. She uh, takes on older horses here. She gets a generous weight allowance. Officially, uh, weight for age scale is considered to be uh, the best part of two stone. Michael Roberts can't quite make all of that. He rides at 7.8. It's been a real job for Michael. He's done it gradually. How did he do it? He told Derek before racing. Well, basically, you're just cutting down on, on my food virtually, you know, just uh, every, uh, virtually cutting everything in half, you know, and uh, it's, it's worked out very good. And also the weather's helped a hell of a lot because, uh, you know, with the, doing the two meetings and that, you know, you you sweat quite a lot and, you know, it, it sort of comes off you, you know. But you haven't got much to lose. I mean, you're not the greatest. You're not a John McCrick size, are you? Well, really speaking, I mean, uh, uh, maybe I'm prob probably to my right weight as, as a lightweight jockey, really, but, you know, uh, I don't feel that comfortable riding at this weight, but you know, I've always had my weight go up to about eight stone, you know. Just what have you eaten? So you feel stronger, you know. What have you eaten in the last 24 hours? Well, just a bit of fish and salad, really, and uh, I had nothing this morning. I just a cup of tea, and uh, uh, that's about all. And if you win today, steak and chips or not? Well, no, I don't believe you must go and sort of uh, gut yourself afterwards, you know, just slowly build it back again, you know, which I think will come back quite easily. You know, I, you know unfortunately, with my fall, I had, you know, it hasn't made things that. That easy, but um, I'm feeling quite good and you know, full of confidence. And all the time that Derek was conducting that interview, a great big fat 18 stone hulk was going fish and chips and bacon and eggs and all sorts of other things. But nothing phases Michael. He uh, is really looking forward to this ride. Let's hope we see her at her best. Yep, she's been referred to as the pocket rocket. We <laughs> really have got to uh, see her in the flesh to appreciate how small she is but here's Paris House who almost uh, won this race last year as a two-year-old and this form he started off really well this year and I'm not saying he hasn't retained his ability but he just seems to have lost a little bit of spark of late but he's back to a trip that is his best and Jack's horses are continuing to uh, find their form after just Actually, losing it slightly in the middle of the season. Actually, John, it's interesting just how a horse could change or not change someone's circumstances. Peter Chandler, who owns him and who named him after the restaurant that he runs, has done an awful lot for racing welfare since he got this horse. He said, I was lucky enough to have a really good horse last year. I'd like to put something back. And he's done just that. He's given a lot of his expertise, time, and uh, 
supported several functions that have raised a lot of money for racing charities. Yep, he's been incredibly generous. Steve Coulton deputising for John Carroll, who had a tumble yesterday, had some tack snap while he was riding work at Jack Berry's. He's pulled a muscle in his leg, but certainly got an able deputy in Steve. I think Steve got on well with his horse. Let's have a look at some of the others. Out. Let's have a look at Mr. Brooks. Started the season being trained in Ireland. I mean, he's thrived since he's come over to Richard Hannon's yard. Runs in the colours of Paul Green. Absolutely bolted up last time out over in Germany. Do you think he's fast enough here, John? He's six and six and a half furlongs his performances have been at. It's well, such a fast five here. It's a very fast five, but on having said that, they're going to go a real good clip. And I'm just wondering whether if Paris House takes on Lyric Fantasy, you're not going to need a horse that gets every yard of this trip. Something might be just staying on in the end. Well, no, nothing stayed on better in the July Cup than uh, Mr. Brooks under perfect timing from Lester Piggott. He swooped from the rear to swamp the better fancied ones. And we can see it now. Come down towards the two, Shelford, and to Bab from Sheikh al -Badu, Paris has the rail. There'll be a pursuit of love and Wolfhound. And Mr. Brooks, the back marker, look at Sheikh al in the white jacket as they pass the two. Shelford shake it up, Paris House running the rail, is running a big race. Mr. Brooks, a horse with a white face, uh, starts to pick up two, but they come inside the final furlong. And it's Sheikh al to home, Sheikh al pressed on the outside by Mr. Brooks, who's unleashing a big run. And Mr. Brooks has come to take Sheikh al -Badu. Can the Sheikh fight back? Pursuit of love, it's flying at the death at the line. A photo of Mr. Brooks, pursuit of love. Well, we looked at the smallest horse earlier, Lyric Fantasy. Now, this is one of the biggest horses in training, Blight and Lad. Stuart Webster riding Blight and Lad this afternoon. He gets on really well with this horse. Sometimes a little bit funny going into the stores. But he's been very consistent. Hasn't actually won this year. Ran well behind two of these runners, Freddie Lloyd at Goodwood last time out. And prior to that, chased home Mr. Brooks at Ascot. That was, uh, way back in June in the King's Stand Stakes. He's a horse, got plenty of ability. And although he's six years old now, it wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility that he's actually still improving. Freddie Lloyd is one who comes into the that category, improving that is. He's better than ever uh, of late. Pat Eddery rides him today. He won last time out at Goodwood. He's a tremendous horse. I was talking to Willie Carson about him earlier in the season. And I said, uh, I was talking about race Pat one on him here in May, and he said uh, he's one horse you don't need a whip on. He said he gives you absolutely everything. He tries almost too hard for his own good. I don't think I've seen a horse improve as much physically as this horse had. We watched him at Chester early on in the season. Didn't get the best of the runs there, finished second. And has come on in leaps and bounds, but he's also come on in leaps and bounds and looks really thickened out well, this horse. Already a winner here. Well, is the pocket rocket a certainty? Let's see what the bookies make of it. Lyric Fantasy now the 11 to 8 on favourite, and Mr. Brooks is 9 to 2 from 4 to 1. Freddie Lloyd is 8 to 1, easing out from 7, and LVO steady on 10. Paris House is now 11 to 1 from 12, and Blight and Lad 25. Diamonds Galore 33s, Farfalu on 50s, together with Med Eye Door. Al Yasaf 66 to 1 as is Harvard's girl, and they're all quoted. Well, nothing looks better in the field than LBO and El Yassaf, and this is LBO, the man of Walter Swinburne. He made a winning reappearance at Longchamp, winning the Prix de Saint-Georges. I suppose you could say overall, John, he's just been a shade disappointing in the rest of his races, although a couple of times he hasn't had the best of runs. Just wonder if maybe doing him an injustice, he's a slight shade cunning nowadays. Now, Steve rode him over in France when he won first time out. Certainly, if I'd had to pick one out on looks, it would have been Albio. Turned out really well and went down to post particularly well also. The well, news tumbling in from the betting ring. 66 runnings of an unthought, 28 favourites of one, 15 at odds on, but there have been 10 odds on losers. They're betting the odds on, Lyric Fantasy here, 5 to 4 on, now up the arm, 11 to 8 on. Quite weak as Pickett's horse, trying to win it for the seventh time now, Lester. Mr. Brooks out to 9 to 2, 15 July Cup winners have won this in the same season, 5 in the 80s. It's an 8 to 1 bar, that's Freddie Lloyd, and money now for Paris House. 
from 14 to 1 into 11 to 1 tight and some bookmakers calling 10 and the Canadian horse Diamonds Galore four geldings have won it but they were all before the war when a gelding last won the Nunthorpe double carpet 33 to 1 now that's Diamonds Galore the Lester Beggart on Mr Brooks six times he's won the Nunthorpe can he pull it off for the seventh time? The punters going uneasy on him now. They're betting the odds on Lyric to beat Leicester. Well, 10 years ago, you wouldn't have seen Leicester figured in that sort of form. He was so serious about everything. Took it, uh, well, so dedicated that he didn't find any, any side of it really amusing, except on rare occasions. But uh, he's a different man now. And so much, John, is, of racing is about expectation and anticipation. Let's hope on this occasion that the realisation isn't a disappointment and that Lyric Fantasy gives us a real run for our money. Yeah, so I'm sure we're going to run for our money. I'd just love to see her win. Always nice to uh, see the two-year-olds upset the form that she would be doing. They've struggled to win this race for a long, long time, and particularly as she is so small. Well, one midget about to go into the stalls, calling them home. Our own Gigi. I was expecting something else, I don't know if you were. That's it, they're lined up for this Keeneland Nunthorpe to take break away. Start so important, Lyric Fantasy out of the uh, stalls like the pocket rocket. Uh, but Mr Brooks is going with her and Freddie Lloyd who went down to the post well in the dark blue colours, diamonds galore. They're heading to the centre of the track and Lyric Fantasy has been taken on by Freddie Lloyd. Freddie Lloyd by a half to diamonds galore. Paris House to the right, on the left, Lyric Fantasy. Length and a half back to Medaidor, then Harvest Gold and Barfalo, and Mr. Brooks and Aliasaf and Blyton Ladd and Elbio, the back marker. Boy, this is fast. They come down two and a half to go. It's Diamonds Galore, and on the left, it's Lyric Fantasy, the red between the pair in blue. That's Freddie Loy. Paris House is there with a chance. Elbio starts to pick up a furlong and a half to go, and it's only now that this little filly starts to go on by a half. Freddie Lloyd, Mr. Brooks is in pursuit. Paris House finishing fast on the far side, but inside the final furlong. And it's Lyric Fantasy who's going to take it, but the challenge comes from Mr. Brooks. Lyric Fantasy by a length and a half, and it's going to be Lyric Fantasy. He has tricked it the line. Oh, so cheeky, Mr. Brooks is second. Then Diamonds Galore, a big run from that LBO4. Freddie Lloyd and Paris House and Farfalu and Harvest Girl and Medai Dor and Ali Asap and Blyton Lad just outpaced. Well, they always say a good big, big one beats a good little one on this occasion. It was a brilliant little one beating a good big one. The result then of this Keeneland Nunthorpe Stakes, it's a win for the diminutive number 11 Lyric Fantasy, a daughter of Tate Gallery in the colours of Lord Carnarvon and a treble for Richard Hannon here on Keeneland Nunthorpe Day. This one Ridden by Michael Roberts at one pound overweight, didn't make any difference to the result. His 154th winner of the season. Second horse home is Mr. Brooks. Lester Pickett at one, two then for Richard Hannon in this group one sprint. Third horse home is Diamonds Galore, ridden by Aaron Grider. And that fast horse uh, ran very well indeed. And the fourth horse home was number three, LBO, who picked up from the back and finished well. Well, I think they've gone very fast indeed. Normally, lyric fantasy who cost just 3-3 three, three at a fall and 12-5 at a yearling. You can pick up these bargains if you can look. Well, she, her, she was being taken off her legs by the paces early on, but it was her determination that saw her through in the end. Yeah, tremendous scenes we'll see, I'm sure, after this, because early on it was Freddie Lloyd, Pat Eddery, blue colours, royal blue colours, the darker blue of the American challenger and Aaron Grider diamonds galore this side, Paris House the Grey struggling, but it's just now, John, and prior to that I was a little bit worried, Lyric Fantasy takes over. She's run a smashing race this filly, normally she bursts off in front, makes all of the running, Michael Roberts didn't hurry her when he found that there were one or two just taking her along early on, gave her time to find her legs, and the further she's gone, she's really got into gear. And although Mr. Brooks, remember, he's already a Group 1 winner, has chased her, he was never, ever going to get past her. And uh, a week or so of going without his food has proved well worthwhile for Michael Roberts. Well, we think that she's clocked the time under 58 seconds. And it was certainly a really good race and great to see are keeping her unbeaten record against these older horses. 
and Lyric Fantasy is returned up the arm on. 11 to 8 on favourite, back down from 5 to 4 on. The second, Mr Brooks, went off on the shoulders, 9 to 2. And the third, bit of money each way for this Diamonds Galore. The trip wasn't wasted. Double carpet, 33 to 1 Diamonds Galore. But Lyric Fantasy, the 29th favourite in 67 running to win the Nunthorpe. The 60th odds on chance to win it. Most recently, Deja two years ago, and never so bold in 85. And she's the fourth two-year-old of 32 to run in the Nunthorpe to win. A smashing filly. Applause her home. Delighted Wendy England returns with her charge. Lyric Fantasy and Michael Roberts. Oh. Wendy, quite rightly delighted. And despite what John the Crook says, size proved not to be everything. 57.39 seconds is the official time. We showed you a list earlier of the horses that have actually managed to clock. 58 seconds her name is now added to that list and it's had an amazing year Lord Carnarvon Niche and Lyric Fantasy both winning here this afternoon they both won at Royal Ascot your jockey's going to be break the rules he doesn't get him to weigh in. I know, I know, he must go in. Go, go and weigh in, Michael. <laughs> Michael, you'll, you'll, you'll lose the race. <laughs> can see terrific. Go on, weigh in. Look, um, could, could you just have a word? Our camera's over here. Many, many congratulations. Well, what a, what very, a dream very for you. Exciting. Well, it's a, it's a terrific thrill because I've always wanted to win this race with a two-year-old. And that's why when I was on the patent committee, we kept two-year-olds in this race. And I was so pleased that Jean Romanet kept a two-year-old in the Abbey. And, uh, you know, Peter won with Be Friendly, the, the Vernon. And I'm only hoping Lord Mantle will stick to his guns. He says he will. Find Whoa. out. Whoops. <laughs> we very nearly, you nearly lost your life then. <laughs> she's but but she's, she's, she's a real thrill. It's right, he, she's hating that round her cocks, look. Yeah, she's got the this, this quarter there, hasn't it? Come on, go and click that. Yeah, do something about that. Oh, we go back. Oh, Whoops, the daisy. Oh, no. no, that's not very clever. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I don't want her to kick over the top of that thing. Take, let's take it off. Wendy, can we just... John, why don't we go and take it off? You've been elected to go and take, <laughs> take that string up, fill it string up. <laughs> well, I'll do it then. Come on, lady. Shall I do it then? Go on, girl. Yeah. Come on. Well done, bro. I haven't got that yet. We are. The end of a great career. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Poor little lady. Sorry, Wendy. Any, anyway, it's a great thrill. It's simply wonderful for... I hope it's wonderful for York, because... At Newbury, we were 20% up on the day she ran, and she, she was five to two on, so it wasn't going to help people to win money, but they came to see an exciting animal. Uh, and star quality. But when you, when you bought star her, quality. when did you think there was star quality? Well, the star she... quality was the pedigree, which you've only got to read. If you're trying to win the super sprint, you've got to have that sort of a pedigree to, to succeed. And that's what I bought her for, and hoping that she was going to be good enough to go to the stud as well. And you've, uh, I may say so, you've been around quite a long time. You've seen lots Ooh, of brilliant... Oh, I know, very long in the tooth. <laughs> but you've seen some blazingly fast yes. sprinters, blazingly fast two-year-olds. Well, Bill Morin was the fastest, I think, I, mm. I've seen, the, the non-classic horses. He was a fantastic fast And that's two-year-old fillies. You know, you, you know, you're saying a little I bit, know. Montez Mahal, but the sort of... Well, the fifth, about. Richard Bairline was talking to me today, and he said, he said he's absolutely convinced that she is um, um, modern Montez Mahal. I mean, she's got to prove Montez Mahal's ability to to breed winners, but on a race course, 
Roberts just said, it means he could have done 56 seconds. Mm. He done 57 there. He did 57. Mm. He could have done 56. Uh, but, uh, you know, she, she hasn't ducked anything. Where does she, does she go on to the Abbey? Anything? Where, where would you go with that? He says she'll stay six furlongs. And um, I, 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 I know Clive Britton is anxious to have a ma match with his filly. But uh, I expect she's going to go to the Abbey, don't you? Okay, Depends on the ground. But I hope the French, we take her over there and beat the French. Thanks very much. Thank you. First number 11, Lyric Fantasy, the 11 to 8 on favourite. Second number 7, Mr. Brooks at 92. And third number 2, Diamonds Galore, returned at 33 to 1. The tape paid 180 to the win. The place is 120, 180, and £3.90. The dual forecast came to three pounds and forty pence and eleven rand. With me now is the American jockey who's had a great first ride finishing third. What do you think of our racing now? I love it here. It's a great experience coming here and I've been in the town for a couple of days. It's been a great experience. Hope to come back. Diamonds Galore ran a cracker. He did. He ran a super race. He settled just off the early leaders and uh, he really made a big run. He looked like, uh, you know, I had some horse left but that that filly is, is, an, is a monster. She's a terrific filly and She's you can't take anything away from her. Now, you ride speed horses all the time. I mean, you clock 55 seconds quite regularly in the States. So how would you rate this performance by a two-year-old filly? This, in, in the States, it's unheard of a two-year-old beating older horses, especially at, at a sprint. Uh, this is a, an older horse that's, that's proven. He holds a couple track records. And to, to beat an older horse, as a two-year-old, that's unheard of, and she's a, she's a, like I said, she's a monster. So if she comes to America later on, perhaps she could be something to watch out for. She could be tough. What's it like? How does this compare? What do you prefer? I mean, in America, you ride about ten races a day. What do you think of this August meeting here at York? I love this racing, and, and I had talked a few years back about possibly coming over here to stay. Uh, you know, I've talked on and off with a few people, and John Gosden was very good to me when he was in California, and I used to ride a lot for him, and he taught me a lot about this racing. So, you know, someday, who knows, maybe I will be over here. I enjoy the racing. And we go over there quite a lot and try and win the Breeders' Cup and the big races over there. You've now proved that an American horse can come over here and run a big race. Right. You know, the, the horses from over here, they test our horses a lot more often than, than we come over here. And, and I think it's great that this horse ran so well. Hopefully some others will try it now. And where do you go from here? You fly back and where I, are you riding I'm tomorrow? I'm flying back to New York tomorrow, so. And you're riding where? Is it Monmouth? Where are you I'm riding? I'm at Monmouth Park, and, and on weekends I go to, to Belmont and Saratoga. It's all go, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well done, and thanks for coming over, and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Lord Carnarvon spoke about uh, the pedigree, and there it is for you. He, she is a daughter of Tate Gallery, who is by... Uh, I thought it was by Nerea, but, uh, but actually by Northern Dancer. And uh, Tate Gallery was champion two-year-old in Ireland, assessed as such, despite the fact that he didn't have a very long career. At two in 1985, he was placed once at three, and then, clearly disappointing, was retired to stud. Flying Melody the Dam, she's produced uh, a number of fast horses uh, on the dam side of her pedigree, but uh, this is clearly the best. Wasn't that fantastic, ladies and gentlemen? A magnificent race for the Keeneland Nunthorpe Stakes. And now going ahead with the presentation, I'm going to ask Mrs. Norma Greeley, the wife of the president of the Keeneland Association, to make the presentation trophy to the winning owner, Lord Carnarvon. Our congratulations to him on bringing the filly here, her brilliant performance. It was breathtaking. We're delighted to see her here. The first time that a two-year-old has won the Nunthorpe for 36 years. Congratulations, sir. Well done. I'm sure you will agree, ladies and gentlemen, a very special day today. And I'm sure Lord Carnarvon will not mind me saying that the Canadian horses have come all this way to run in the race, did run a magnificent race to finish third. We're delighted to see him over here, and congratulations for the connection, and to all the horses that took part. And now we're going to ask Mr. Greeley if you'll make the presentation to the winning jockey. Here's the man himself, Michael Roberts. Step forward, Michael.
what a great evening you're having and it was all the work in the sword it was all worthwhile well done i'm sure so although richard hammond isn't here to receive his prize having saddled the first three winners this afternoon he's gone off to saddle two more but our congratulations to him on a brilliant performance and he will be giving his prize shortly and mrs greeley thank you very much and please accept a box of chocolates on our behalf thank you Yama, the 250, first number five expansion is five to two, second number four big pat nine to two, and third number three cocktail lady, the seven to four favorite, non runner two and five run. And at air, the three o'clock is won by number three first option, the five to four favorite, the second number one Cochran Ranger at 16 to one, and third number two Montone two to one and five run. Michael Roberts, uh, surrounded by uh, admiring fans here. Michael, blazingly fast, but she had to run all the way. Yes, I knew today that we probably wouldn't be able to lead all the way with those experienced older horses in the race. Uh, but it never concerned me because she, she's never been a filly that actually going to win a race out of stalls and just uh, really? kill them off in the first sort of three and a half furlongs. She's a filly to me that usually eats the stalls well. She runs and uh, if anything is fast, then obviously they're going too fast for me. But to me, she's always come good halfway through a race, and the last two she really picks up and then come through and do a thing at the end. And uh, to me, I can't see any reason why she can't get six furlongs. Well, really, because in the middle of the race, it looks as if you were just having to sort of make her work. You weren't Well, I mean, mark. you know, the leader was pretty loyal. It's very fast horse mm. and uh, experienced. And I mean, you know, a little two year old, mm. you know, looking at them down to the start there, I felt a bit lost because he was so mm. tiny mm -hmm. you know, among these big old sprinters down there. But uh, I mean, you know, they stretched us. You know, I mean, mm. you know, we, uh, she, she was tried to the full today. And she ran home six furlongs. How much more improvement is there in her, do you imagine? Because she is so small. Is, is it perhaps that she's a whippet for, for finish? Obviously, you can't. I mean, I can't say how much improvement because, I mean, she's matured. I mean, she, you know, she, she knows her job and everything. And, uh, I mean, Mr. Hannon will probably be able to help you more with that. But, I mean, to me, she's, she's all there. I can't believe she's only just a two-year-old because, I mean, she's, you know, she's taken like racing so easy and so, so laid back and the way she races. She feels like there's more and probably next year with a bit of time or she can be better. Michael, you've sat on so many horses down the years. Does she feel genuinely different to Oh yes, others? most definitely different class filly I've sat on, especially two-year-old class. I mean, she's brilliant, she's proven it. I mean, you know, the first filly to won this race, I don't know since when, um, must be great. It must be an odd sensation, this little tiny thing underneath it. But very fast, sir. Michael, now about yourself, because it has been a, it looked pretty rough this week once or twice. You've been very creaky. And you've been extremely hungry. Yeah, unfortunately, what are you now? not the weight wasn't the problem. I mean, you know, the fall I had at home, you know, that really knocked me a bit because uh, last week I, I was a lot in pain. I'm still taking sort of, uh, you know, getting injections for, for my back because I pulled a muscle down in my back on the fifth and sixth vertebra, which is really hurting when I'm leaving the stalls. But, mm. you know, in the race you don't feel it, obviously. And, also, you know, just when horses are pulling, uh, you know, that's really been, been sort of been the killer all the time because my weight was really going away nicely because of, you know, the heat and everything. Mm. So I, I didn't really, well, I never went in the sauna at all because I can't actually take a sauna. And everything was just happening nicely for me until the injury, which is really sort of, you know, feeling miserable with it as well, you know. Mm. Uh, but it was all worth it and uh, well, we're still here. And the championship's still the target? Well, we're trying our best. And going far. Thank you. Thank you very much. And as you would expect, really big bets for all that lyric fantasy. One or two punters actually bet the six to five on. But 10,000 to win 8,000 twice. 5,000 pound to win 4,000 five times. 2,500 to win 2,000 seven times. Really lumpy bets for that lyric fantasy. And she completed a 21 and a half to one treble for Richard Hannon off the revelation. Burlington Bertie, 130. Niche, two to one. And 11 to eight on lyric fantasy. 21 and a half to one treble. And of course, in this race coming up, he's got Rockton North now a 25 to one chance and Wave Hill at 16 to 1. I think one or two punters might even have the Yankee running up on those two following the great three winners that, that he's gone and had already. And news on the 1,000 guineas. Well, this is extraordinary. Ladbrokes have produced the odds for that and they make Lyric Fantasy a 14 to 1 chance, second favourite for the 2,000 guineas. What a fascinating uh, training performance that would be if Richard Hannon could get her to stay a mile. Say a Datty, the 10 to 1 favour, the Cherry Hinton winner who beat Niche. This is for the 1,000 guineas. Say a Datty who beat Niece in the Cherry Hinton goes for the Moy Glare Stud Stakes in Ireland on the 5th of September. She's the 10 to 1 favourite. 14 lyric fantasy, 16 Shimoto and Dancing Bloom for Michael Stout, also a 16 to 1 chance. 
very early show here. Little Bean, six to one, seven to one magnified. The day steamer, that blockade, put in a ten to one, ten to one. A lot of each way money from 16 blockades, but they're all here. They're buzzing. They've seen Lyric Fantasy. The first filly ever, a two-year-old filly ever to win the Nunthorpe. That's a memory that will stay with us for a very long time. Even in this transient world of racing, that was some performance. Well, let's look back at it. It certainly was uh, an exciting race. And John, as they came out of the gates, you said uh, to us in the preamble that you thought that Freddie Lloyd and a couple of the others might be too quick for Lyric Fantasy, as indeed Michael felt, and that's what happened. Yeah, they just took her off her feet just for a few moments, but at this stage, you can see Michael Roberts is just sitting quite happy. Freddie Lloyd really does blaze the trail. He's a really fluent mover, just doing everything underneath Pat Edry. But I was more impressed with the American horse. We've seen certain, the Canadian horse, rather. We've seen a couple come over here in the past few years and certainly given us no sort of show like this horse has. And he got himself in a bit of a stew beforehand. He was travelling pretty well, just got a slap, but kept on. That's what impressed me more than anything, because he came under pressure quite early. Stuck to his guns, though. Paris House of Grey on the far side. Steve Corton just beginning his challenge. But it's at this point now, with about a furlong to run, that Lyric Fantasy gets up sides Freddie Lloyd, and it's left to Mr Brooks. Just coming on, running through, tiring horses. It was always a possibility that it was going to be a little bit too short for him, this trip. And that's certainly how it proved to be, doing his best work at the end. But really, I think this filly would have held him, even if they'd gone another half a furlong. And the clocking time official, 57.39. So she did beat 58 seconds, 57.39. Uh, a really, really impressive performance. She gets all the weight allowances, don't forget. But goodness, she's fast. And she was cheap. She was less than 13,000 guineas. So you can get bargains and racing is to blaze. They start racing young, though. Some of our uh, participants. This well, hmm, don't think she'll beat 57 seconds for some time yet. But racing, she'll be able to say in years to come that she saw Lyric Fantasy. She's a bit of a myth, but she'd been around at the time. Stay with us. T-shirt soon? Yes, I can see it needs a wash. No, no I'm full. Oh, that T-shirt's clean. Another wash, it'll fade to girly pink. Careful with that lolly, James. Too late. Bye-bye, Red. Hang on. Mum's been using new Persil colour all the time. Word in the creche is it gets rid of dirt without bleaching out colour. It's clean. It's still red. New Persil colour. Washes out stains without bleaching out colour. Mm, maybe red doesn't suit me after all. No other wallpaper paste gives you more slip than Polycell, so you get the perfect match. Polycell wallpaper paste. It doesn't just grip, it gives you the slip. Great finishes start with Polycell. Over the years, millions of volunteers have given up their spare time to help defend our nation as members of the reserve forces of the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. We think they deserve your support. After all, who knows where we'd be without them. One times five is one. Two times two is four. Four times four is sixteen. Sixteen times two 
256. Germs multiply at an astounding rate. 65,500. Although ordinary liquid cleaners get rid of dirt, they can't all kill germs. Here's one that does. Domestos multi-surface cleaner. It's not clean unless it's hygienically clean. It's not, it's not quite right. I mean, what it needs is a little... Uh, ah. Good old granddad's looking after the kids in his own particular way. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Luckily, Crown Solo self undercoating gloss and advanced one coat emulsion will cover that lot up in no time. Nice one, Granddad. Yes. Oh, hello. What do you think? Green. Make your home your own with Crown. Pick any Safeway melon for only 89p. Safeway. Where good ideas come naturally. Welcome back to York with some news from Yarmouth. The 325 won by number one, Buzzers Bellboy, 17 to 2. Second number seven, Tiffany's Case, at 13 to 2. And third, number nine, this has been uh, at seven to one. And no joy for backers of the steamer. Number ten, Flash of Straw, the four to one favourite, 12 round. Bit of trouble there, looked like Al Karif going out onto the track. But this, the Bradford and Binkley handicap, we may have had an odds on winner in the last race. He won't get one here. They're going to bet six or seven to one the field. Really open handicap, the Bradford and Bingley, one miles, is a non-runner, he already had a 22 star connection, it still leaves 22 runners to get ourselves around this and Graham. And one significant jockey change, Leicester Pickett rides number 13, Noble Pet. The top weight lead the dance at one, Steve Cawthon, two, Deprecator, at, uh, ridden by Willie Carson, number three, Jim Crack Premier, Mark Birch, four, Irony, Philip Robinson, number five, Magni, five, Pat Henry, six, uh, is Jal Music, and that one's ridden by Steve Maloney, who claims the five. Seven, Venus Observes, Antoinette Arms, claims the seven. Eight, Do Labs Image, Steve Williams, claims five. Nine, Rockton North, Lincoln for the first time, the man of John Reed. Number ten, Little Dean, Michael Hills. And number eleven, Main Did, Frankie de Tory. Twelve, Big Blue, Michael Roberts. Thirteen, Noble Pet. Now, Lester Figure. There's proof, just behind in that red with the green sash. Fourteen, Philidor, Ray Cochran. Fifteen, Ashburn, Walter Swinburne. 16, Wave Hill, Bruce Raymond, 17, the well-backed blockade, Jason Weaver claims 5, 18, Golden Chip, Paul Ellery, 19 is Killy, Alan Munro, 20, Dublon, Tendre, Ernie Johnson, uh, and number 21, Al Karif, Alan Mackay, 22, the non-runner, and 23, Selda, written by Neil Kennedy. And here's how they bet. Little Dean is the 6-1 to one favorite, magnified 15-2 to two from 7-1. to one. Blockade is 9-1 to one from 10, and Jean Musique steady on 10-1. to one. Jim Crack Premier a 12-1 to one chance, they go 14 far. Yep. This the dial the distance race, your last chance to get on now. The winning distance between first and second, 0891, 10195, and Give your choice of what the winning distance will be. 0891 100 195. 100 pounds to be won. Three times it can be done. And three winners will be announced before the end of the program. Uh, this, of course, the Naves Ma is an open, open common land. These people are in the centre of the track. And uh, I was out here early this morning. It's actually beautiful condition, the inside of the track. Really, the grass is in better shape than I've I've ever known it. And this, they're walking across actually the um, all weather surface that horses cantering on the track can canter on in the morning. So, the favourite here is Little Bean, who's having a cracking season. He scored a good one last time, and before that, finished with real determination at Newmarket. They come down to the two, these two dueling. Eferisto, Wellington Rock picking up nicely in the very pale jacket. Sharty follows up one through. Little Bean with a bit of running to do. 
and Eferisto comes to join the front rank. They come down to the final furlong. But Big Leap has come through on the rails. Big Leap, the rail runner, Eferisto. And from nowhere, Little Bead has come to bounce. And inside the final half furlong, it's Little Bead who's going to get there. Little Bead wins it tidily in the end, a photo second. Here's another in with a chance. This is Deprecator, who's been going down just past the two fellow markers. So it'll take a few minutes before this race gets underway. Willie Carson's in the saddle, and Deprecator has plenty of weight, nine stone nine. But he's earned his place near the top of the handicap, following some good efforts this season. And he looked as if he'd appreciate the longer trip today when he came with a good run to beat three of his rivals who take him on again in a seven furlong handicap at Newmarket a couple of weeks ago. They've got just over a furlong and a half to go. And it's Crystal Heights now pressed by Super Brave with Deprecator coming with a run. Hard to figure off the pace with a run. Big Leap is poised to pounce. They've got a furlong to go. It's Deprecator and Crystal Heights. Hard to figure and Super Brave. Do Lab's image gets room on the rail. Tofan Blue with a run. But it's Deprecator and Willie Carson scooting clear inside the final furlong. Do Lab's image finishing fast. But Deprecator takes it. Do Lab's image. Hard to figure. There's pink colours there, Jim Crack Premier with Mark Birch on board, of course, who hasn't actually won this season, but he's been knocking on the door, been running pretty well and shaping as if a, a decent handicap will come in his turn. He was involved with two of today's runners, Rockton North and Deprecator, in the opening race of the first Sunday meeting at Doncaster. Jim Crack Premier didn't quite make it, but he didn't miss by far. Well, it's less to big in the black fellas on the outside, but panicking, running the rail and panicking going on. Panicking by a length and a half to two to deputated Jim Crack Premier in the pink colours on the wide outside of the tax Savoyard. A start to run of panicking, coming to the end of his run now. Jim Crack Premier and Savoyard are finishing fast. But as they race up towards the line, it's going to be Savoyard who bursts through the dive stride. A photo, Savoyard and Jim Crack Premier. Now, what about the steamer today? There he is in the background, the red with the grey sash right in the middle of the picture. This is Blockade. He's got a very impressive record, this horse, having won nearly half his races, seven wins from 15 runs, and those wins have come on all sorts of ground, which is quite amazing when you consider that his breathing was so poor that he had to be tubed, and that's why he runs now with a steel inlet in his windpipe. Still, it doesn't seem to affect him, and he was a comfortable winner at Newmarket over today's trip at the beginning of the month. Blockade and coach in from Beluga Common Council and change of will. Then behind these northern graduates, Straw Thatch. Uphill to the final furlong and it's Blockade, who's made virtually all the running. He still has it. Blockade the leader, coach in staying on well. Northern graduate and Straw Thatch, both with runs close home. But it's Blockade clear by about three to four. That's the line. Blockade takes it. Well, if you saw those, those shots of those various races, which was the best? Well, many punters reckon it was blockade. But they seem a 16 to 1. It opened 10 to 1 on the course. It's now 8 to 1. Clear third favourite. Halved in price. Blockade, a massive each way money for that. Little Bean holding solid, the 6 to 1 favourite. 15 to 2 now against Magnified. 11 to 1, Jal Music. And 12 to 1 and possibly 14, Jim Crack Premier. And 14 and bigger prices the rest. But that blockade, many people reckon that was the trial, that was the race that matters, and only two horses in the race, three horses in the race, are carrying more weight than blockade. Surely it's not the fourth worst horse in this race. Eight to one, the steamer. There's Magnified, trained by Barry Hills, ridden by Pat Hedery, an improving miler. Started off the season with a second, and then won a handicap at Leicester, finishing well. And then, didn't get a great run, when sixth to Little Bean. Not exactly well handicapped, but uh, as he's lightly raced, John, and has shown a pretty high order of form, he must come into the reckoning in what is a desperately difficult race to solve. Yeah, he's a nice-looking horse. He normally comes from off the pace, and we just heard that blockades the steamer. Well, another one of Mike Bell's inmates, good reference, actually beat this horse first time up. And uh, I'd say this horse has improved a fair bit since then. He looks to have done himself really well but it's a wide open race we've had some really exciting handicaps here the last few days we've got another one coming up right after this race lots of interest half a dozen or more that you could fancy block blockade though done really well to actually get onto a race course because not only is he now a gelding he's also uh, had a soft palace operation he's been hobdayed he's been tubed 
and he's still actually running off the mark a little bit lower than he finished up last season. Got himself a little bit worn beforehand. Well, we've seen Deprecator win. We saw a few of those trials. I didn't think the blockades race actually amounted to all that much. I was much more impressed with Deprecator. I thought balled himself up a little bit once he hit the front. He absolutely looked fantastic here beforehand. And John, he runs a, a mile here. I don't think that'll be any problem to him. No, it was seven at Newmarket, and he seemed to come there quite easily. And they rode him a little bit differently there. He was up there, um, took much more interest throughout the race. Well, somebody's been drinking lunchtime. I'm not sure who that is. That's that is Deprecator. Woody Carson just missed his foot in there. I think he might have got a knock in the back as he came off. Obviously a little bit of a highly strung character because he was taken down a long, long way behind the others and very quietly. Well, he'd be a strong horse, I should think. Once he gets going with you, he takes a little bit of anchoring because, as you can see, he's very powerfully built. So the horse just going in there and giving him a lead. Number one, lead the dance. He's not out of it, even with top weight of nine stone ten. A lot of weight for a three-year-old, though. A couple more to go in. If that happened to nail you down for one bet, Jim, what would you go for? I think lead the dance each way is big price. Well, five to one little bean, seven's magnified, eight's blockade, eleven's bar. So a couple more to go, Arony and Salda. Arony probably wants uh, more given the ground than he's got here, although he's by no means badly handicapped uh, in terms of uh, the pick of his form. Salda, trained by Richard Whittaker, his best effort was last time. That was also on ground easier, easier than he races here. It's an open handicap. Let's hope it's not a rough race. Early pace in the race, perhaps, from Al Karif and Joe Music. Blockade, expect that one to be up there early. Breakaway then for the Bradford and Bingley. And uh, through the first furlong, it is indeed Blockade that just goes on. Blockade the leader. Noble Pet and uh, tr Philidor tracking in behind horses, weaving right out the back of the pack. But they go through the first furlong. A little bit of scrimmaging on the rails. Astrid a little bit of a sufferer. But it's Blockade leading. Blockade from Arony. And then Jal Music can lead the dance at top weight, followed through uh, by Killy. Running the rail in green is main bid. And then just behind these, Rockton North and Astrid. And up on the outside of the pack is uh, Wave Hill Mid Division. Doolab's image not that far away. Deprecator behind the Jim Crack Premier will spin wide as they start the turn in. Pass the five, blockade by a length or so to Jal Music and then lead the dance the rail. A length and a half back to Arony. And then behind these uh, with a run is Al Karif. And then behind that one is Zulab Zimic. Not that far away is Zubal Entendre. And they come down to the three mark. And the pace has been hot, but it's been blockade who's been out in front virtually from the start by uh, lead the dance in second and then uh, Jar Music is third and the saddle slipped on the lead of Blockade giving Jason Weaver no chance at all and uh, having a very awkward time indeed but the horse are doing his best they've got a furlong and a half to go and it's Doolan's image the pale blue visors that come through uh, to take it up Jim Crack Premier the outside Blockade's keeping on well Deprecator off the pack Lester and Noble pet out wide are flying at the death but it's Doolan's image here comes Noble pet the white sleeve and Deprecator off the pace but it's Doolan's image who's going to take it Doolan's image Deprecator Noble pet and Billy Dore, the first four, a great ride uh, by Jason Weaver on Blockade, eventually finishing five, and a very uncomfortable ride as well. Uh, then behind these came Jim Crack Premier, followed through by Killian, Rockton North and Magnified, and then a gap to Venus Observed, Double Entendre, and then Jal Music, followed through by Little Bean, and the back markers include Arony, and eventually Ashtren lead the dance and Wave Hill. But the result then of this, the Bradford and Bingley handicap, it's a win for number eight, Doolab's image, in the colours of the Claremont Management Services Limited, and it's a photo second third between Deprecator, who flew at the death, so too did number 13, Noble Pet, Willie Carson and Lester Piggott are uh, concerning the photo second third, two Deprecator, 13, Noble Pet, two, three. I think we'll find the fourth horse home is number 14, Philidor. I'll be watching for that in the replay because it certainly started a bit slowly, the horse that finished best of all was number eight, Doolab's image. And uh, Steve Williams there uh, just uh, punching the air with delight. Claimed five pounds. Very competent uh, jockey indeed. Doolab's image, our winner.
Deprecator is second, Noble Pet is third, a length and a half back to Philidor in four. Well, this looked pretty rough over a furlong from home. As we pick it up now, there are three that are clear, and that is Blockade, followed by Lead the Dance, and on his outside, Jal Musique, and behind the pack are closing. Well, the winner was ridden by Steve Williams, giving a really good ride, but the ride in honours, in my book, has certainly gone to Jason Weaver on Blockade in the fr in front, because his saddle has already gone back, I should think, best part of 18 inches, and he's just about now to bend down, get his feet out of the irons, and he was very lucky that uh, he was capable enough and horseman enough to be able to do that and say on the steward's inquiry has been announced. But have a look, because they're really tightening up now. Jim Crack Premier just beginning to tighten up Deprecator a little bit, who's coming in and uh, be really a little bit short of room deprecator i'm not sure whether it's actually affected the winner or not though jim now the winner seems to have, have run through a, got a lovely run through willie carson's following him through behind and deprecator keely got involved in some scrimmaging and look now lester piggott on the outside as he came through on noble pet he gave pat eddery a bump who in turn went into rock to north ridden by john reed and lester's horse continuing to drift to its left under a right-handed drive and the stewards that may well be the main incident they're looking at, but watching that head-on, it does look as though Doolab's image is out in the clear and the inquiry won't involve him. And Doolab's image out in the clear, according to Jimbo, returned 14 to 1, Doolab's image. Deprecator looks to be second, also returned at 14 to 1, with Noble Pet looking to be third, a 16 to 1 chance. And the fourth appears to be Philidor, sent off at 14 to 1. They made Little Bean the 5 to 1 favourite, and Blockade certainly drawing for his life, flying early on, certainly, and hampered late when well beaten, though. Blockade was an 8 to 1 chance. But that winner, Doolab Simmage, is the second longest price winner in 37 runnings of this race. 106, 16 to 1 wrangle for Sam Hall in 1964. 14 to 1, Doolab Simmage, that'll keep it. It's up to the stewards now in this meeting of stewards inquiries to decide the places for us. It's only our view it doesn't involve the winner. We don't know that it's just the placings only. Let's look again now, particularly at Jason Weaver's predicament. Remember, he's on the leader blockade. And John, you were impressed. This is an even better view of it. Well, because what's happened, his feet are in the irons and he's gone back so far. And you can see there he's almost more off than he is on. And he's just had to feel down, get his feet out of the irons. He knew that he wasn't going to be able to stay where the saddle was about to uh, end up. And having done that, he's even then tried to do his best and kept pushing and shoving but obviously the chance is gone then but just have a look now on that outside we've got rock to north on the outside of jim crack Pemria, the eventual winner there do labs image and uh, well go back to jason weaver really good picture there i think that's pretty frightening isn't it well <laughs> he's, he's obviously done a lot of um riding in his time i must admit i was very impressed with him i watched I watched him at Beverly one day on a horse that actually didn't want to go down to the start and was doing something similar to the horse we saw here this afternoon with uh, Lindsay Charna. And Jason Weaver probably raised his voice an octave, but certainly did well to stay on board. Well, Derek's down there. He can ask the jockey now if you can hear him. Yeah, I've, I've got just him, John. Jason, tell us what happened. Um, before we just come into the bend, the saddle started to slip backwards. And I thought, I'm just hoping it stays here. I hope it stays where it is. Yeah. And then it's just gone further and further back and started to slip round. And I've had to sit down and kick my feet out of the irons. Yeah. And then just, for the old pony club experience, come back in, sit down and ride him home. Yeah, it's a good job. But it's just a bit difficult because he's also running from the lead. And when I've had to sit down, the horses have come past me. And sort of that's his race then, you know. It's a gutting the way feeling, wins, yeah. yeah. How worrying is that when you're on board three out with well, nothing underneath you? It's happening so fast, you're going along at 30 mile an hour, you haven't got time to think about it. Well, it's good to see you walking. You'll be singing in the choir on Sunday night, I think. Well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're walking. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. First number eight, do Lab's image at 14 to 1. Second number two, Deprecator, 14 to 1 again. Third number 13, Noble Pet returned at 16 to 1. And the fourth horse, number 14, Philidor, 14 to 1. The favourite was number 10, Little Bean, 5 to 1, non runner, 22, and 22 round. Air, the 330, won by number 5, Rolling the Bones, at 5 to 1. 
Second number three, Atterdale, five to one. And third number two, R. Sailor, the six to five favorite, nine round. The wing distance, half a length. We'll give you the full winners later on, half a length for the double distance competition. One more race to come and a special burst of operatic song here on Channel 4. Stay close. Come into Dixon's to test drive any camcorder and we'll give you a copy of the tape you shoot absolutely free. Not only that, you'll find all the top brands, the latest models and great deals. Like this Sanyo camcorder, now under 500 pounds. Or this Sanyo with 8 times power zoom, intelligent autofocus, remote control and accessories worth 150 pounds. Whatever kind of camcorder you're looking for, there's a great deal going on at Dixon's. stop harmful carbon deposits clogging up your car's heart, keeping it pumping cleaner. And a clean engine means less harmful exhaust gases, which is better for you, for your car, and for him. If, for the walls in your home, a silk finish is a little too shiny, Didn't see you there. Oh, you're getting so heavy. Whoa, mind that basket. There, how's that? Very nice, thank you. Now then, oh, doesn't he realise I'll inherit that T-shirt soon? Yes, I can see it needs a wash. No, fine. No, I'm full. Oh, that T-shirt's clean. Another wash, it'll fade to girly pink. Never with that lolly, James. Too late. Bye, bye, red. Hang on. Mum's been using new Persil colour all the time. Word in the creche is it gets rid of dirt without bleaching out colour. It's clean. It's still red. New Persil colour washes out stains without bleaching out colour. Mm, maybe red doesn't suit me after all. Morning, Marlene. Tell us brand flakes, please. You train us, Vince? Yeah. I'm taking a few small steps to change my lifestyle. So you started running? No, but I'm thinking about it. So how have you changed your lifestyle then? Kellogg's brand flakes. They're low in fat and high in fibre, which is part of my healthier lifestyle. And they taste good. So basically, your new lifestyle is eating Kellogg's Bran Flakes while wearing trainers. Well, it's a start. <laughs> Kellogg's Bran Flakes. A step in the right direction. OK, get working now. New Cream Silk 2-in-1 shampoo, conditioner, and now Pro-Vitamin B5. Absorbed by every strand of hair, making it stronger and fitter from the inside. You don't have to work at it to get healthy-looking hair. Cream Silk 2-in-1, the daily workout for your hair. The Bradford and Bingley trophy presentation has to await because the stewards inquiry and continue experience the stewards have been busy at this meeting but Doolab's image goes comes down distance to go for the Air Gold Cup is in tremendous form and they're very hopeful for the Air Gold Cup next month incidentally one inquiry we don't think our view is that the Doolab's image is unlikely to suffer in that inquiry one inquiry that's likely to continue is that Pat Henry has announced he will appeal against his five day ban which he got after his ride on Silver Wizard in the gym crack yesterday. So plenty of action, plenty of controversy here 
at the Ebor meeting. And one more race to come here at the Ebor meeting. Three lovely days and the Channel 4 team motor south tonight because we've got two good days coming up at Sandown. On Saturday, it's Variety Club Day, that annual day where anything can happen. The stars of stage and stream come racing. But also tomorrow, it's a cracking good card. And the big race is the Solario Stakes, nine two-year-olds over seven furlongs. Let's check out the runners and riders. Some interesting two-year-olds in this. Fitzcarraldo, that's trained at Newmarket by Luca Gamani. King Paris from the Michael Bell Yard, that's pretty fast. Muka Demov from the Henry Cecil Stable, that's been working very well indeed at Newmarket. Also, Tierman Island, number eight from Paul Cole Stable. His two-year-olds are absolutely top class, and Tierman Island won't be far away. That's the Sunset Boulevard Solario Stakes. Sunset Boulevard, incidentally, is the new musical of Andrew Lloyd Webber. And there are some interesting races tomorrow. There's the amazing Joseph Dream Mile. There's the Starlight Express Roller Stakes, not Roller Skates. Aspects of Love Graduation Stakes and the Phantom Stay Stakes. Reason quite simple is that Andrew Lloyd Webber's company, a really useful company, and also Polydor Records are sponsoring the whole day. And one of their latest worldwide hits was that unforgettable music that was used at the opening and closing ceremony of the Olympics. It certainly reminds me of two great weeks of top sporting action at the Olympics. The music was written by Andrew Lloyd Webber, sung, of course, by Sarah Brightman and Jose Carreras. Maybe I have known 